I know uh, through some research you've been doing, you, you, you've looked at three potential future operating models to, to try and address some of these issues. Could, could you take us through those and, 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 and how, how those alternatives might look in the future? Yeah, sure. So I think I think the first one, and this one's probably been around, it's been you know direct competitors to the fully managed model for some time, is the in-house managed model. Mm -hmm. So you know you could think of this as outsource versus in-source. Um, we've we've seen some organisations effectively take this route, um, particularly with the kind of off-the-shelf technologies like like Cisco Meraki, for instance, and then just going out and buying local internet services. And then having an, an element of success with that, you know, from a commercial perspective and from a, a speed of deployment and a general management point of view. Um, but we do also see some complexities with this model in that the more service providers, it, the more the more kind of local service providers that you add to the mix, the more complex it gets in terms of service management, billing management, contract management, vendor management, because, you know, you can get quite complex quite quickly. Mm. Um, so although there is a place for elements of in-house management, particularly around where you can add some intelligence and agility to the overall network design and network management, going full full in-house um, is something that we've seen some organizations struggle with um, just because of the complexity. I think we've got examples where actually, you know, some, some customers have decided to go down that route, but then decided to pull some of it back into a managed model because of it's in the in the too hard box to too hard to do box. <laughs> so you've got to find the, the balance right with that one, I think. And presumably in that you've got you know, there's a lot of kind of low level challenges in there of having the you know, sufficient resources, having the right skills, keeping people trained. Yeah, you know, there's there's lots of kind of uh, you know, quite kind of detailed challenges in there which yeah, yeah traditionally organizations haven't you know haven't necessarily wanted to, to to grab onto yeah i think so I mean, it's a really good point the kind of acquisition and retention of skills um in this area and particularly as that starts developing out into new technology areas as well um can can be difficult um you know you've got to think to try and re replicate the the resiliency and sustainability that the MSPs have got trying to replicate that internally, um, particularly if you're like a 24 seven business um, is, is fairly challenging to do mm. um, and can be, can be fairly costly as well. Um, so the model has got to be right. You know, the kind of environment has got to be right to be able to support that in-house in -house mm -hmm. type of approach. Um, the second, the second option, which is a relatively new one, and we are seeing some of the MSPs actually offer this, um, but we tend to see this more in the kind of SI space is this concept of build and transfer. Um, so this is where, you know, a, a service provider would come in effectively stand up the whole infrastructure, stand up the connectivity, stand up the contact center, whatever whatever technology it might be, um, and then transfer the, the orchestration of that and the support of that upon completion. So this is quite attractive for some organizations where they've not got the, you know, they've, they've effectively got a pool of BAU resources but not necessarily a large pool of project or development um, mm -hmm. resources to effectively you know, design and develop and deliver this type of capability. Um, so we are seeing that becoming, I wouldn't say it's massively popular, but we certainly see quite a lot of interest in that capability to do that and then hand over the support mm. either, to, either to their internal teams more often than not to like another outsourcer that might be in the mix. Um, so some sort of, you know, business process outsourcer or Siam type outsourcer, mm -hmm. um, give it, giving the keys to them once it's effectively been built and delivered. That's um, interesting. So you get the specialist resource for the kind of the, yeah. the high intensity activities around design, architecture, deployment, et cetera. But once you've kind of got that steady state environment, you, you, you hand that over. That's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so I think I think that will be one that we will see a bit more of in the future, um, because again, tied to the things around the limitations of the in-house model, skill limitations, you know, being able to acquire and retain and retain uh, highly skilled people to be able to do some of this design and deployment activity, um, it's quite easy just to come and pay someone as part of a professional services bundle, get that delivered, and then yeah, transfer it back into the the resources which you know over that period of time can train up, or you can give it to a, an existing um, incumbent service provider within the organization mm, interesting so i think i think the final model and, and this is the one that we're probably seeing as being most popular um and this is across the board again you know from a from an msp and an si perspective 
is this co-managed model, the concept of co-management. Um, so this is where we're starting to see um, certain capabilities and functionalities being handed back into the customer base. Um, so that could be simple, you know, policy management, routing changes, anything that can be um, delivered through the orchestration platforms or web platforms um, for, for things like change um, is, being, is being effectively handed back into the customer to try and enhance that flexibility and agility of the manage, management wrap. Um, so this is, we are, you know, again, this is where we see the best of both worlds, really. So you've mm -hmm. still got, you know, a good solid single contract um, or multiple contracts supporting the overall infrastructure and the network. Um, but you're also allowed, you know, you've got, you've got the keys to go and tinker yourself as well um, and make changes that are critical to your business, but do them rapidly um, rather than having to wait for the process of the MSP. Mm -hmm.